It's live on KEXP. I'm your host, DJ Kevin Cole from Listener Powered Independent, 90.3 FM KEXP in Seattle, streaming worldwide at KEXP.org and via our free mobile apps where you can hear a human curated music mix 24 7. KEXP is a nonprofit arts organization, and these live performances are made possible by listeners, viewers just like you. We appreciate everybody who donates to KEXP. And I'm so happy to be joined today by John, all the way from the UK for the very first time in Seattle and the US. Welcome. It's great having you here. So uh, how about a set and then we can talk about uh, things. It's KEXP. Live on KEXP. Yeah. 
UK duo John live on KEXP. Yeah. 
UK duo John, live on KEXP. The new album is a life diagrammatic. UK duo John live on KEXP, Johnny Healy on guitar and vocals, and John Newton on drums and vocals. Welcome to KEXP. Hello, thanks for having us. It is great you. having you here. Uh, last time I saw you was 2019 at our International Clash Day in London Calling broadcast, and then later on that year in Paris opening for Idols. Oh, yeah. Indeed. And uh, since then, you've released a handful of singles, EPs, and basically three albums. Yeah, it's been a, been a while. <laughs> <laughs> it has been, right? So uh, we could jump in all over the place. But uh, tell me how the band has evolved, uh, and more specifically, since 2021's Nocturnal Maneuvers record and, uh, and the new record of Life, Diagrammatic. I think we, um, obviously when we started out, there was quite a, a direct, uh, loud force yes within the band which is obviously something that we love through the, the bands that we've listened to mutually um but i think we started to unlock uh, a kind of more of a cinematic feel um within nocturnal maneuvers and uh as with most albums we make it usually opens up more questions which is you know it intrigues you to answer them so um we just keep doing that and yeah. What, what, what kind of questions do you have uh, examples? Like is this during the process itself as you're examining like uh, songwriting or whatever? Yeah, I think we both just 
you know, we love a multitude of different types of music. And after 10 years, you still want to feel like you're progressing. I feel like I'm stealing all the words from Johnny here, but do you feel the same way, Johnny? <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously it's evolved as a sound. The first record was very dry, very fast, you know, very heavy. Um, and then gradually as the album's progressed, I think we've creeped in a lot more music, you know, musicality and like more soundscapes, um, a lot more kind of, yeah, like trying to make it more than just two people, trying to make it like a whole spectrum yeah. uh, and trying to do that still live. We, you know, trying not to do anything we can't do. Uh, it's still a live, live band, yeah. So that's Sorry. the really important thing about it. Um, it. It's interesting there. That leads to a bunch of questions. Um, so one, I, I can hear that. I can hear the new textures. And I love hearing how you guys have evolved over albums. It's really cool. Yet to me, you also still sound like John, just brutal, relentless, uncompromising. Yeah, I mean, I can't get away from I, I like, I like energy in music yeah. and I like extremity in music. So I, I wouldn't want to go too far yeah, away yeah. from that. Well, you can still have some ebbs and the, yeah. the songs to have there's, really great there's, dynamics. There's still some very John sounding songs on the album, even if they are, have got a bit more of atmosphere to them. There's still, you know, fast riffs and stuff, stuff that we, reasons why we started the band. So, you know, it's just grown musically um, to, uh, I guess, our sound, because the first few albums, it's like you're still kind of figuring it out. And I think feel like on this most recent and the album before, we started to kind of lock into something that basically is us. Yeah. Um, so you've invited some guest vocals on the new album, but you're still uh, a duo, a two-piece, with a huge sound. So, um, Johnny, you kind of alluded to it, but, yeah. um, you know, being a two-piece, I'm sure, has obvious advantages and yeah. challenges, and how do you work with those? And So, I mean... Obviously, overcoming, like, the main thing that people always talk about is having a bass player. But um, So I'm trying to make it not sound like we have a bass player, but sound like there is bass in the sound. So, for instance, using pedals and my right foot to turn the bass in and out to add mm -hmm. dynamic, because, you know, if you're just playing guitar and drums, you're just going to get one sound the whole show. So we still like to have that, you know, fullness of sound of a bass player, so that's why we use two amps. John uses samples, you know, I'm doing backing vocals now, which I never used to do. Yeah. So just uh, trying to do as much as we can physically. Um, but yeah, I think the limitations are important to what it is. You know, you, you get a lot of, uh, I think there are actually comments on the, on the last session saying like, oh, where's the bass player, you know? But actually it wouldn't be us, you yeah, know? Yeah. It, I think Johnny mentioned about the pedal and the, the important thing is how you use that dynamically. Yeah. You've got to, make sure that it, there are levels to move through. Otherwise, like he says, you're going to get this flat, yeah. flat you wanna, song. You want to build up, you want the tension and release. And without the bass, you don't get that. So it's really important that we have that. And like John was saying, we've kind of made it our own sound, not just having a bass player. That would be the easy option. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> one of the things. The tension and the release is, is, has been there and is evolving and is yeah. really in this new record, new songs. Do you have kind of any sort of rules or ethos for John as a band? Like, as a duo, do you have to be able to play the songs live? Uh, yeah, we, 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 would, we wouldn't want to write anything on the album within reason yeah. that we wouldn't be able to do live. There's obviously certain things in the studio that will add to a record. So we like putting that on and having fun with that. But something that you wouldn't miss live. It wouldn't be noticeable. Yeah. Um, so a lot of bands find a team that they're comfortable with and they carry that through their careers or their next albums and it becomes kind of a collaborative partnership with uh, producers and, and engineers, etc. Um, you used a whole new team on this new record. I'm guessing that is in part to just challenge yourselves? Yeah, I mean, we, we stuck with, um, you know, the, the same producer for three records, yeah. um, you know, uh, which you know, functioned really well. Um, but, you know, you, you just want to challenge yourself after, you know, after 10 years of the band. And, um, yeah, we were really lucky to kind of stumble across uh, Tom Hill um, on our kind of live recording B-sides of, of a couple of singles on the last campaign. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that kind of also opened up mixing in the States with Seth Manchester, who has recorded some fantastic albums. So it's a no-brainer. So, yeah, it was great to work with some people who are different. Yeah, it was like a happy accident with the demos because we did some demos um, and the room sounded so good. That's kind of what then took us to then record there because we kind of fell in love with the sound of the room. And then 
because of that, the whole album has the sound it has. So I think it was kind of like a, not an accident, but like a, it was, wasn't planned. Yeah. So. A Life Diagrammatic is the new record. There's some guest vocalists, as I mentioned, uh, Barry Adamson, former member of Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds and Magazine. Magazine yeah. Tell me how you connected with Barry or, and, and Simon, uh, Simon Pegg as well, because both of them um, are known to work cinematically. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, that's 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 a key part. So I'm glad you've mentioned that. It's um, you know we've we've long been fans of both of their creative output, um, and they were both people who we had found out enjoyed what we did. Uh, so I know that Barry had picked our album out for, I think, uh, you know, for a end of year list, and um, and Simon had been you know has been there from the start actually yeah. you know in, in way back in 2013 14. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're nice things to bring these people on board who, you know, obviously we admire uh, and also, yeah, they, they have a, a cinematic background, which I think we wanted to kind of push within this record um, off the back of Nocturnal Maneuvers, which kind of unlocked kind of further cinematic elements. Yeah, it's cool how they're used, too, because they're more like uh, almost a narrative components. They're not like yeah. Barry's not all over the record playing yeah. or singing or... No, I, I, we, we wouldn't want to do like shoehorn people in for for the sake of a name. Yeah. Like you, you want to. We want to use them. Yeah. You know, for you know for their talent. You yeah. know, so you know Simon, his his reading of that it came in first time and nailed exactly what you were looking for. Yeah, and it would seem it would just seem uh, it wouldn't seem right to, you know, not follow the you know it's a kind of crusty monologue that I wrote, but you know the idea was that it was quite down in the mix and it's kind of hidden as a, a kind of fictional telephone call. Um, so why would we turn it right up and slam it on top of the track? Like it, it wouldn't seem creatively sensible. Yeah. And, and from a listening perspective, it's cool because you sort of pulls you in deeper. I'm like, what, what, what are they saying? What's going on here? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so uh, tell me about the song Ridley Scott Walker. Cause I think like many of our listeners, I, uh, immediately thought of filmmaker Ridley Scott and artist Scott Walker. Uh, but the song is actually inspired in part by Ridley Walker, a character or the, the name of the book uh, by yeah. Russell Hoban. Hoban. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal book uh, that is written in a kind of fictional language called Ridley Speak. And uh, the more you read it, the more you kind of start to understand uh, and it's also about the process of history. So it's in a kind of post-nuclear future that actually seems like old England. So it's kind of this regression. So I, I just, I'm interested in those types of things with how we kind of look forward yeah. to a future and whether we can, you know. <laughs> Good point. Um, in that song for you, is the inspiration then and in just capturing kind of the lingering feel, feeling you're left with after having read the book? What? I think it, you know, it touches into, we've always written very uh, close to our hands. So it's always about kind of everyday experience and yeah. some of the, you know, some of the routines that we find ourselves hedged into. And I think that that book in particular, you know, just made me understand my own experience of the world yeah. um, a bit more. Um, John, to what extent has moving from London to Brighton impacted then your day-to-day -day experience and how does that get reflected in the music? Yeah, I mean, Johnny's still hanging in there on the, on the, on the coattails <laughs> on the, of on London. The fringes. Yeah, <laughs> on the fringes. Yeah, on the fringes. Excuse the pun. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's natural. You get influenced by the things that you see. Um, and I think there were a few direct locations throughout the album that kind of really helped me build this this world and i also tend to make the artwork at the same time as writing the songs so that's a way that i kind of package it all up into um yeah into something that feels cohesive yeah the artwork for the new record is phenomenal just the image on the front i don't even know how to describe it i'm not sure what it is it's being yeah. kind of squished there but then you open it up and uh i mean there's uh kind of a, well, not kind of a, there's a poster with, that's almost a schematic of some type. Yeah, yeah. I guess a life diagrammatic. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Leona Ferrugia. Ferrugia, yeah, yeah, Ferugia. yeah, it's all right. 
um, <laughs> is a guest vocalist on Service Stationed, and she's from the band Jean. Yeah, fantastic band. Just released their album. We're loving that. Well, I'm loving that record. It's, it's yeah. great. Um, so tell me about bringing uh, Leon in on vocals and how you saw that complementing the song itself. Well, I think, yeah, I can speak alongside Johnny by, by kind of saying that we often will be in the studio and we'll be just listening out for things. You know, that's part of the fun of being in the studio. And, um, yeah, I mean... Well, she added stuff that, you know, we could never do ourselves. So it was nice to have this dynamic of her voice, which is really sort of operatic in yeah. parts. And um, I never thought about it, but then when it was there, it just worked. And it just really complemented the, the track because it's quite a heavy track. It's tuned down to A on the guitar, so it's a really low tuning. So to have that high operatic voice over the top, it just kind of lightens it up and gives the chorus kind of just a bit of a lift. It's fantastic. The album is fantastic. A life diagrammatic. It is John here live in the studio. Really appreciate you both taking Thank the you. time to, uh, to Thank play you, for Kevin. KXP today. Thanks Thank for your support much. as well. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Thanks so for having us. It's John live on KEXP. Huge thanks to the KEXP crew here. And uh, thanks to all of you for listening and viewing. And it's uh, listeners, viewers like you that make all of these live in studios possible. You can donate to KEXP online at KEXP.org. I also uh, suggest that you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get a notification when we launch videos multiple times a week. So you can be the first to see them. And again, uh, thanks to all who donate. Thanks to all of you for listening. I'm Kevin Cole. And this is KEXP Live. Discover new music at KEXP.org.